Sound design. All right, so how do you do a main fill alignment with L Acoustics P1 M1 setup? Now, the last video I did, the main sub alignment was pretty long and it seemed like it got pretty complex and complicated. So I want to make this video short and just get kind of straight to the point of where I think you may potentially run into problems. I picked a microphone location here. I've done my EQ and now we're just looking at two solo locations. So no averages. And then here is the summation between them. You can see a lot of comb filtering right now because they are not aligned. They're not arriving at the same time. So I would head over to my auto align tab here and we see the problem. Um, by the way, I wish the cursors would work down here. That would be nice because if the cursors were working, then I could click here and see exactly how far these peaks are off away from each other. And so this actually started out like this. Um, so I might look at this and I would say, okay, this is around two milliseconds. This is a little, uh, this is close to nine. So nine, eight, seven, I'm expecting about seven milliseconds of delay to get these two impulse responses on top of each other. So I try one of the, uh, auto solvers here and it says 6.6 .6 and a polarity inversion. And I'm looking down here and I'm seeing, yeah, this looks pretty good. Not totally matched all the way through here, but I can see that at least the peaks are on top of each other. It looks like they're in the right place. Great. But then I notice, Hey, this is not, I'm not getting full summation all the way through here. There seems to be some weird things going on. And I start wondering, are these speakers even phase compatible? Now, if you are using two speakers from the same family, I think it's generally safe to assume that, right? They were made at the same time. They're built to work together. Um, but I guess don't make assumptions, right? Um, but generally manufacturers have taken care of that for you. In my case, I'm using two different speakers. One is, isn't even really for live sound. And so now I'm, I have some suspicions and I'm wondering, are they phase compatible? Um, and let, let's just go through these real quick. So you'll see in auto solver number two, now we get a polarity. Uh, it's taken out the polarity inversion. And so now we have a different result for summation and cancellation through here. And then here is the third option. And this seems like, I don't know, we have more summation down here, but now these peaks of the IR aren't even aligned on top of each other. So now I'm a little bit confused and I'm wondering what's going on. This one looks the best, but I'm not getting summation down here. So I might decide to look at the phase graph, but as you can see, it's not very helpful. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned in a previous video, but I did ask Scott Sugdenell Acoustics um, what they plan to do about this. And he said that it is on the to-do list. So I think you can expect some sort of software update to M1 in the future where you'll be able to look at these unwrapped. Um, and that would be great because if you were to look at them unwrapped, it would look like this. Um, here is my little fill speaker. And then here is my main. And now we see in orange here that my main speaker has several more wraps than my little fill speaker. The only way I know how to solve this would be to add some all pass filters. We need to slow down our fill speaker so that is it is arriving as slow as our main speaker. If none of that makes sense to you, don't worry about it. The point is, we want these pictures to match, right? We want the phase traces to lay on top of each other. This measurement of the fill speaker is directly from my measurements over in M1, but this one is directly from Tracebook. Why? Because if we turn these off for a second, here is my measurement, which is a lot harder to read. This is the measurement from M1. This is what a normal measurement looks like, right? In a room with reflections and it's a small room and makes it difficult to read. Just showing you this to show you again why it's really helpful to have some sort of reference trace because if we look at this measurement from Tracebook on top of this measurement, now we can kind of read through the noise. So even though the phase trace is a big mess here, we can see, oh, these are all just reflections and I can kind of ignore them, but here is the trend I should be expecting to see. So that when we look at our fill speaker on top of that, I can see, oh, okay, 
this is why I'm having all these problems. So, all pass filters. Um, as far as I know, there's no such thing available on the M1. Um, all what we have over here on the EQ tab, so would, we would need to do that on the fill speaker. Um, we have a nice small set of filters here, um, but no all pass filters yet. So, um, if you want to fix this problem, you would need to do that in another processor. So, what can we do here though today if this is all we had? The only thing I know how to do is to try and move this big section uh, that is not working into isolation. And I figured you could just do that with an all, um, a low shelf. So I would go over here to my EQ tab. I would put in a low shelf that starts way up here where you know the problems are happening and try to get this guy below 10 dB. You know, let's, let's make it extreme. Let's even go way down here. Um, and let's look at the result. I'm not sure how helpful this will be, but I'm going to take this. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it in for now. So let's look at the summation between them. Great. We see that we're getting summation here. Of course, we have a problem here where we have our first phase inconsistency problem. Um, but I would need to take the high shelf even farther to make that work. And I'm not going to do that right now. But you can see that as the blue trace, our fill speaker moves into isolation here, that the sum goes back to being mainly um, just the main speaker. And keep in mind that this is the average of all of the main measurements here in pink. So yes, uh, you are seeing some local problems here with this main, um, but this is the overall trend across across the room. It can be good to keep in mind what the goal is of the fill speaker. So we want to do things like um, improve direct reverberant ratio, reduce ripple, improve intelligibility. And we're doing that here up in the high end, you know, only in this little section, but it's going to be helping. And so I think it's okay for us to try and just remove some of this low end. You know, this main speaker is going to be dominating the low end everywhere. We don't really need a lot of low end from our little fill speaker there. All right, so those are some of my thoughts about how you might think about a main fill alignment when it comes to using L Acoustics M1 and P1. If you have any suggestions for me, please comment on this video and let me know if there's anything else you want me to test with this thing before it goes back. Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.